So rabbit proofing when you live with an indoor rabbit is incredibly important because rabbits can literally kill themselves on household objects and we want to talk about that a little bit. The biggest danger with having a rabbit indoors is electrical wires and computer wires yep. and this is this one is that what I it had. looks like. I mean, I don't know. You turn your back for a second. It's like they know where the cords are. They love computer cords, but this one you see, and I had no idea if I had plugged this, whatever it was to, you know, I could have really hurt myself. So what we do, a, a good thing to do is you can get this plastic tubing at your local hardware store and you just use like an, uh, a blade to cut right in this. In, you can um, actually use the scissors. Yeah. And then you just fish the cord through here, you know, and fish it through so it's completely protected. So they might chew the plastic, but that's okay, it's, it's protecting the cord. And they will still chew the very end of this, even when right. you, yeah, you can't, there's some things you just can't help. Right, but this is the fun part. They get a jolt from it, <laughs> you know, so. They get, yeah, they get more than a jolt. Um, living with your addictive, uh, Rabbit. Yeah, okay. in, in the veterinary clinic, as you probably remember, I'm a veterinary technician, and mm -hmm. we see rabbits come into the clinic sometimes with charred mouths. Very sad. Wow. The owner will just say, my rabbit's not eating anymore, what's the matter? And the first thing I'll ask them is, what does your rabbit have access to? If their rabbit is free range in the house and they haven't done adequate rabbit proofing, mm -hmm. very often what's the problem is that the rabbit has chewed an electrical cord and burned his mouth and it's wow. too painful to eat. Okay. So we look in the rabbit's mouth right away thinking, oh, maybe he has a tooth problem. And before you even look at the teeth, you can see the burn in the mouth and that really hurts. But you shouldn't have exposed cords in your house anyway. It's unattractive, you know? <laughs> I mean, straight guys do it all the time. You go to their house and there's cords everywhere and you're like, gee, so it looks better anyway when you fish it through and you hide it behind your sofa. Yeah. But yeah, they love cord, telephone cords, any kind of cord. Um, and also baseboards, they love to chew against resistance. So I covered my baseboards with two by fours and just made that the baseboard and painted it to match the wall. But And I covered did. mine with furring strips and didn't paint yeah. it. Okay. And now I have all chewed furring strips, which is great. As and what are furring cover, strips? Furring strips are, uh, well I'm not a construction person, but they're used as I understand it, they're used as like standards on a wall and then you put wallboard on top of them or something like that. Don't hold me oh, okay. to this. But they're thin pieces of wood. They're not heavy like two by fours. Okay. So it's easier to handle and it's easier to get them on and off the woodwork if you're working alone just with little nail tacks. It, okay. it works really, really well. And also whatever you drop on the floor they're going to find. So sometimes Absolutely. I get down on the floor and see things at their level and I'll find neat, I'll find all kinds of things and yep. they can get in the springs of like if you have a, a relaxing recliner, recliner, recliner yeah. they can hide up in the springs of that and um, or your bed what I did was um, what do you call the springs I had a rabbit that lived yeah. in my springboard um, yeah and this is not bed. unusual I don't allow my rabbits in my bedroom at all anymore because they can get underneath your bed and they chew the fiberglass covering that's under your box spring and then they work their way up into the box spring right and the fiberglass covering itself is dangerous and if they're living in the box spring and you don't even know it you can't find your bunny. This is another big problem with rabbit proofing. If you don't have adequate rabbit proofing and you don't have areas closed off that should be inaccessible to a rabbit, if you have a sudden emergency like a fire in your building or something where you have to evacuate quickly, you're not gonna know where your rabbit is because you right. haven't rabbit proofed to the extent that you closed off areas that weren't safe for the rabbit. Right. You wanna be able to get the rabbit at all times. Mm -hmm. and the other thing you wanna watch out for with rabbit proofing is toxic plants. Believe it or yeah, not, right. a, a lot of house plants, a lot of ordinary house plants are toxic to rabbits and they mm -hmm. eat, you know, a few leaves that people think, oh, that's not a problem. And it is a problem. I remember early on when I first had rabbits, this was, what, 30 years ago, I gave my rabbit a house plant. I was so naive about <laughs> rabbits and I had this nice, I thought, yeah, green, green plant, rabbits eat greens, right? So I gave my rabbit this plant, um, it was some sort of an ivy plant and the rabbit stopped eating by that night and the next day was just lying flat out. Thankfully, he did not die, but he could have because of my ignorance. So now I try to use my ignorance to help other people not be ignorant That's and smart. let them know that you gotta get those plants away from yeah. the rabbit. And also furniture yeah. legs. I, t I just put um, toilet paper tubes around, you know, the furniture legs. So which is, which is great. That. The rabbit proofing, tips could go on and on and on. The main thing to remember is anything that's out is accessible to the rabbit. So nothing should be out that you can't afford to lose or that could hurt the rabbit. If you have bookcases, for example, you have books on the bottom shelf, you can expect the books to oh, be sure. chewed. Right. It's gonna happen. One thing you wanna watch out for with rabbits too is lead paint. So mm -hmm. if you have, uh, if you have woodwork again and you haven't put something over it and the rabbit has chewed it and is getting sick, that should be something that you report to the vet if you take the rabbit to the vet. And carpets too. And Carpet, carpets. You know. I, had, I had oriental rugs in my Manhattan apartment when I lived in New York City. 
and I came home one day, I didn't really notice what was going on under the furniture, and the rug fringe was all gone, and they were starting, <laughs> starting on the wool. So, yeah. so we like, when we're rabbit proofing, we like to recommend this kind of flat yeah, like rug. Yeah, cotton. Yeah, in any area. Wash. Exactly. They're washable. You can put them over other rugs. Mm -hmm. um, if you have rugs with pile, for example, the rabbits are likely to chew the pile if they have access to it. Years ago, I had a, an adorable little lop named Daniel, and he lived in my back bedroom, which had brand new wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. And again, I didn't know any better then. He didn't chew the carpet early on. So he lived there for close to a year, and I came home one day and there was a piece of carpet missing the size of a small plate. And it didn't come from the edge, it came from the middle. Somehow he had gotten bored and, um, and chewed the carpet. Thankfully, he didn't die, but mm -hmm. he could have. Right. Okay. So all these near disasters are, are life lessons for us with rabbits. And we try to let other people learn from our experience so they don't have the same vet bills and the same health risks that our rabbits have had. Right, so, so. protect your home. Yep.